What is up guys? It is Joe. We are back talking about the cats. We've hit a couple of videos in a row each a day this week, I feel like, so I've been on a little bit of a hot streak lately. K-State is attempting to go on a hot streak of their own in the recruiting world with the addition of Villanova guard Brendan Housen. Now, Housen is on an official visit this weekend to K-State. I'm going to talk through my thoughts about him as a player, him as a fit at K-State, and everything under the sun related to that situation. But before I do, let me tell you this. Guys, we are closing in on 2,000 subs. We're at like 1,900, I think 1,898 at the time of recording this. Once we hit 2,000, I'm giving away one of these bad boys. A lavender quarter zip that could be yours if you're one of the people that signs up. And once we hit that, it's going to be a big deal. I'm going to kind of celebrate it, talk to you guys on the channel. Maybe we'll think of something cool to do outside of just a lavender quarter zip. But it does help me out immensely. It's a cool way to support the channel. It helps me continue to be able to allocate time and resources to this channel. So be sure and consider subscribing if you have a few seconds or if you just like seeing the videos and I will love you forever. Now, Brendan Housen, the Villanova sophomore guard. He's a three-point deadeye. I mean, what else do you want to say about the kid? This kid is a three-point shooter. This is the dude that gets to March Madness that shot 150 plus threes and 20 different two-point shots the entire season. That's the type of player this kid is. Now, we'll have some highlights of Hausen playing in the background as I talk from the Portal Report. Shout out to my guys over at the Portal Report. You'll see some in-game highlights as well as some practice footage of the kid shooting threes. It was too cool of a video not to share with you guys, so I wanted to pop it in here. But let me talk to you about the fit. First things first, guys, we do have a lot of guards on the roster. But I'm not sitting here saying, why are we adding another guard, blah, blah, blah. Guys, this is more competition. This is more you know, of a challenge in practice is more of a challenge on the court. Brendan Housen hasn't been like a 30-minute guy in his time in college basketball yet. Last season, he's coming off the most minutes of his career at 17.6 minutes per game. Freshman year, played 8.9. Has seen action in every single game that Villanova's played in the last two seasons. And he's a career 40% shooter. I think technically it's 39.5 if you want to split hairs. But the kid is a legit threat from three. If you're not seeing that in the video yet, you will understand soon enough. Brendan Housen, as a sophomore last season, averaged 6.2 points, 1.6 rebounds, and half an assist a game on 39.2% shooting from the field. And usually you, you look at guards that are in the 40s and say, wow, that's a pretty good number. 30s is okay. But when you're a guy that shoots entirely from three, 39% from the field is pretty damn good. So Brendan Housen, last season at Villanova, I don't know if I had the full exact stat uh, let me pull it up here. Here we go. Shout out to my guy, KSU fan. He's much smarter than I am, and he does a much better job on these breakdowns. But I wanted to give a shout out to my guy. So here is the exact breakdown of this. This tweet was put out by KSU underscore fan. Housen is a three-point sniper that was recruited to Villanova by Jay Wright before he retired. A former top 75 high school recruit, Housen made 39.5% from three over his two seasons, 38.1% this season on nearly five attempts per game. During his career at Villanova, this is a fun stat, took 223 threes and 23 twos at Nova. Not 223-223, not any type of combination, not 223-123, 223 three-point attempts and 23 two-point attempts during two seasons. That's the type of player this kid is. I'll talk more about him and have some more information, but I also want to mention this other video I'm going to toss up in the video. It is a practice clip of him shooting threes. The kid hits 49 straight threes in the clip. I, he hit so many threes, I had to speed it up after the first five shots. I don't know if it's playing now or if it'll play in a few minutes, but I did want to include this as well, just to give you the idea of the type of shooter we're considering bringing in. Now, here's the thing. Some people might look at this addition and say, why are we bringing in another guard? We don't need guards, we need bigs. Then there's the other people that say, we need a token three-point shooter, a dude that's going to step out on the court and his goal, hey, shoot from three. We need you. We didn't have that guy last season. Tyler Perry was a hell of a shooter. He's a great shooter, but he also had to do so much on the court that he couldn't just specifically focus to the type of play he's had in the past. He had to adapt his game. Housen will also adapt his game, don't get me wrong, but his MO is shoot the ball from three. The kid can pull it from anywhere on the court, and I think he's a really great player. I wanted to read you a text from a buddy of mine, Matthew Postens, who also works with me over at Heartland College Sports, because I was kind of, initially I was disappointed in the report, not because of the player. I think he's a heck of a player and he'd be a great fit. But it took me doing some thinking, because I immediately am like, why are we bringing guards in for a visit when we can go get bigs now? There's only really two bigs out there that anybody's interested in as of right now. There's going to be more that hit the portal down the season. Matthew Poston set me straight and basically said, it's strange. I've never thought of the Big 12 as a, in quotations, big league, referring to the big man, in the time I've covered it. That's over the span of many years covering the Big 12 and college basketball as a whole. If you have it, great. You have a matchup nightmare. But if you don't, you still match up well with most teams. I mean, think about it. How many dominant bigs were there in the Big 12 this season? And when I say bigs, I mean specifically guys that play the five. Not just the four, because you could have like an Arthur Kaluma who's a wing forward. You could play him at whatever. Not just a David Gasson. Like, how many teams had dominant bigs? Kansas had Hunter Dickinson. You look at a guy like Bandego from Cincinnati. He's a big dude. Didn't have much offensive attack. He wasn't a dominant big, but he's a guy that comes to mind. Brandon Garrison from Oklahoma State. He's a dominant big, but he's so young as a player, he didn't hit his ceiling yet. 
I would go on a limb because as of right now, I can't think of anybody else. Baylor. Baylor is the other person I should think of. There were two dominant big men in the Big 12 Conference this last season. That's Hunter Dickinson and Evis Misi from Baylor. Anybody else that's coming to my mind, like there's good players like Jaywan Roberts or, you know, JoJo Tugler when he was with Houston uh, before he got injured. But you lose a little bit of the dominant big man aspect. And so I kind of pumped the brakes on myself. So shout out Matthew for that uh, update. I thought it'd be something cool to share. Don't worry about the bigs. We have bigs in mind. We have the right people in mind. We're going after the right people. Specifically with guards, you can never have enough depth, especially a guy that shoots 53s in a row like it's nothing. That's the type of player Brendan Housen is. Let me read you his high school stuff. Like I said, he was recruited out of high school by Jay Wright, one of the greatest coaches of all time in college basketball. He was a four-star prospect in the class of 2022. He's from Amarillo, Texas. Shout out George Strait one time. He was the nation's 117th ranked player, the 17th ranked shooting guard in his class, and the 10th ranked player in the state of Texas. Follows Jay Wright and goes to Villanova, spent two seasons with the team, etc. Now, this is the breakdown that our 247 recruiting sports analyst broke down here. Brandon Jenkins, recruiting analyst for 247 Sports, spoke on him saying, Housen is a long-range threat whose overall understanding of how to make plays makes him a more efficient basketball player. His best asset is his ability to make shots from long range. He is a true shooting guard who plays better off the ball where he's more effective spotting up off the break and in the half-court situations. K-State didn't have much of that last season. The major question about Housen is in his ball handling versus pressure, which needs to be worked on for him to become a reliable secondary option on ball. But he knows how to play the game the right way. This is shown in how he is a willing ball mover who does not force shots, but converts on open opportunities. Well, that was coming out of high school, so that's the first thing first. That's in 2021. Now it's 2024. Housen was not a selfish player. He was never that guy that's going to force things like... The other thing is he's not being recruited to be an on-ball guard. This is a shooter. This is an off-ball guy that's a catch-and-shoot guy. This is your J.J. Redick. This is your Brady Heslip. This is your Connor Frankamp. Anyone you want to use as that example, that's the type of player he can be. So Brendan Housen is on campus. I don't know if he's there right now as I'm talking because it's uh, Thursday night as I'm recording this. Not sure if he's gotten there. I'm sure he has. But Housen is set to be a really good player. He's currently ranked uh, just outside the top 100 in the transfer portal. These rankings don't quite mean anything. I made a video yesterday with three dudes that were not ranked at all in the transfer portal, and I was excited about all three. K-State adding another guard probably means one of two things. One, believe it or not, it doesn't make me worry about the bigs as much. The staff isn't sacrificing their vision to bring in worse bigs or bigs that aren't, you know, like plug-and-play guys immediately. They're waiting for the right guys. And I don't mean to say waiting like we're waiting till August, but they're waiting to see what all the cards are before they, before they strike. Obviously, you're working on a guy like Clifford Amori, but the staff isn't just, you know, okay, we don't have a big yet. We need a big right now, and then recruit a guy that's not deserving. That being said, adding another guard of his caliber is probably going to make some waves in that room. Does that push a guy that hasn't seen many minutes out like an R.J. Jones or like a Quez Glover? I don't know if it does. Coach Tang just raved about Quez Glover on a recent interview with Three Mall. Shout out to my guys over there. I don't know if either of these guys move, but the addition of Housen definitely does make some waves in that terminology. I mean, it does add another guard, a seventh guard to that rotation, and he's by far the best shooter of that group. I don't think anybody should be worried about the fit or worried about the rotation. This is a guy who is a great shooter that you can play in whatever type of minutes restriction you need to. He's probably not going to be a 32, 34 minute guy at K-State. That's probably not the case. But who's to say he's not going to get 15 minutes, 18 minutes, and be a knockdown shooter when you need him? That's the type of guy that can spread the floor in a five-out offense. You like the addition if you go there. It's a four-star guy that kind of has a reminiscent game of Cam Spencer from Villanova, or excuse me, from UConn. Sorry about that. Spencer obviously has some multifaceted parts to his game, like rebounding. He's got some attacking, some ball screen stuff. But he's a guy that's not afraid to do the dirty work and will show up defensively and offensively. Housen hasn't quite shown that because I don't think he's had much of an opportunity in terms of like, Anything outside of his realm. Hey, you're shooting the ball, that's what you're here for. Don't worry about defense, don't worry about offense, just shoot the ball when it gets into catch-and-shoot situations. Could that be his role at K-State? Yes, and that is going to be his number one role, but the kid has a lot to his game that is yet to be unlocked, and like we all know, Coach Tang gets the best out of his players. So, Brendan Housen, if you come on down to Kansas State, I would be stoked about the addition. I think the sky's the limit for whatever we end up doing in terms of a rotation, but... Coach Tang talked about it. They are not sacrificing any opportunities. Hey, we've got enough guards. Hey, we got enough bigs. we got to do this. They are making sure they have the depth to go on a national championship run. It's not a, well, we have six guards, so we don't need a seventh. It is quite literally, if you can get the best guy available on your board, that's the people you want to bring in, whether that's depth, whether that's a starter, whether that's whatever you want to bring in, as long as you're going for the right people, which I believe the staff is, I think there's no reason to not trust them. So I think Brendan Housen would be, a, would be a great addition. It sounds like there's some smoke rolling towards him committing to K-State. Obviously, if you are visiting a place, you're probably feeling pretty dang good about it. K-State still waiting for an answer on Baba Miller, the Florida State transfer. We'll talk about him a little bit more 
As the week goes on, I imagine we'll see a Baba report eventually, but that being said, these have been my thoughts on one of the best shooters in the transfer portal, Brendan Housen. I think he'd be a heck of an addition, and he could be the best shooter to wear a K-State jersey in quite a while. But guys, I am going to try and get out of here. I appreciate each and every one of you guys listening. Thank you for all the support on the channel. Be sure and consider subscribing as we continue to climb towards 2,000. I will give you more details on that giveaway here soon, but I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I will talk to you soon. Go Cats!